<laughs> Resuming statements, the Honourable Member for Victoria. sit down because the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona has said it all. <laughs> all I'm going to do is footnote what she's already so ably said in expressing her gratitude to so many people on all sides of the House, to people who work here and make our lives e uh, easier every day. But I would want, Mr. Speaker, to just, because this may be my last time to speak in the House, to say a few things. First of all, I have to thank a lot of people. And then I want to talk about some of the highs and some of the disappointments before offering some general conclusions. You know, it's been almost seven years since I was elected, first in a bylaw. Not a particularly auspicious occasion, I just about lost, but managed to squeak through and then did happily better the next time in the 2015 election. My list of people to thank must start, of course, with the people of Victoria who put their faith in me to represent them. It's a cliché that I'm, has been said more times than once this evening, that it's an honour that everybody has who gets to have their fellow citizens go into a polling station and put an X beside your name. I'm so grateful to the people of Victoria and Saanich and Oak Bay, the nearby communities, who bestowed their, their faith in me by doing just that. Every day I'm mindful of the enormous responsibility that comes from that, that uh, debt of gratitude. And I want to use the word, I, when the very first speech I gave in this place, I used the Nechalnath word of ESOC, or respect, because I think that has to be crucial to our role as parliamentarians every day. The experience of, of, give, of getting elected as a member of parliament has really given me an enormous opportunity to know the, the amazing community of Victoria where I live. You know, I've got to know people, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure it's the case for you, from all walks of life. I've got to know people who make their living in so-called as binners, people who uh, get money from uh, recycling revenues from bottles and cans, that's how they live all the way to billionaires, because Victoria has uh, both categories. I'm really proud of Victoria. You know, it has the, I like to say, I like to brag, it has the, uh, the lowest unemployment uh, rate in Canada, and, but also the people with the biggest hearts in Canada. It's a generous, compassionate community, and I'm so proud to live there. It's quite a magic place, both because it's dynamic and it's gorgeous at the same time. Most people care deeply about their natural environment and they have enormous, uh, uh, they, they care deeply for the well-being of their, of their fellow citizens. Now I promised I would say thanks to a number of people, so bear with me. First I want to th thank those people in my Victoria office who do the heavy lifting every day of navigating a sometimes cold and distant federal bureaucracy <coughs> to help people. I want to start with Elisma Perry. Tony Sprackett and Lucy Mears. Next, to the frontline people in my Victoria and Ottawa offices over the years, Edward Pullman, Danielle Dalzell, Maura Part, Andrew Johnson, Crystal Thompson, John Luton, Tyrone Lemkel, Tabatha Bernard, Charlotte Smoley, and Alana Cal. It's quite a list. And then my Victoria political family, Eric Kay, Ellen Godfrey, Samantha Montgomery, Sarah Bergen, Shannon Ash, Andrew Cuddy, Brianna Merrigan, and now especially the very talented Victoria Councillor Laurel Collins, whom I hope will succeed me as the Member of Parliament for Victoria in the next election. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my family, my two sons, Ben and Mark, who I'm so very proud of, my remarkably supportive spouse, Linda Hanna, who is here with me tonight, and my extended family, represented tonight by Leslie Hanna and Barry Lassiter from Calgary, who've come all the way to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, so I promise to say a few things I'm proud of and then a few disappointments. Let me start with the good stuff. I am, th I think one of the most important things, the most meaningful things I had the pleasure to work on since coming here was to secure pensions for people who were the victims of thalidomide poisoning. Yeah. It's, 
serendipitous how that works in politics. I got a call from a friend who was doing pro bono work for the thalidomide victims of Canada, the indomitable Mercedes Benegi, and th she, he said, can you help us? And I went to Libby Davies, it's talked about in her amazing book, and we went to Rana Ambrose, the then Minister of Health, and we managed to get every single member of Parliament to vote in favour of long overdue pensions for people at the end of their lives suffering from thalidomide. And then there was the, the debate on medical assistance and dying. I had the good fortune of having a law partner and a dear friend, Joe Arve, who went to the Supreme Court of Canada in a case called Carter, reversed a decision of the Supreme Court of Canada in a case called Rodriguez, and established a constitutional right for Canadians who were suffering from interminable pain to avail themselves of medical assistance in dying. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that to me that was the finest moment in this place. People working across parties, I want to pay particular tribute to the then Minister of Health and the then Attorney General, the member for Markham Stouffville and the member for Vancouver Granville. But I also would be remiss if I didn't pay tribute to the member for Don Valley West, who ably chaired one of the committees. There was a Senate committee, there was a Justice Committee, worked with senators like Senator Cowan and Senator Joyal, my colleague from Cynthia Santa Bagot, very wise on that committee. And we ended up, despite our differences, despite profound philosophical, ethical differences, coming up with something that I think does Canadians uh, well. And I, I'm very proud of the way Parliament worked. To me, that was its finest hour since I came here. <clears throat> More recently, my work as Vice Chair of the Justice Committee uh, allowed uh, Canadians to understand the revelations of the former Attorney General uh, in the SNC-Lavalin matter and remind Canadians of the crucial importance in our democracy of the rule of law. I'm also very proud of something that I can't even talk about, which is the work I have been doing uh, under the able uh, leadership of the member for Ottawa South it, with the National Security on Intelligence and Committee of Parliamentarians, which looked, of course, at a special report on the Prime Minister's trip to India. But I say much more importantly, did the first in-depth review of our Security and Intelligence Committee. The work that uh, the Canadians do to counter espionage, uh, to counter t uh, terrorism, foreign interference, and of course safeguard our freedoms. We spent endless hours on that work and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that I was uh, given the honour of being elected by my peers as one of the hardest working MPs. I'm proud of the public service of Canada with which I've had the opportunity to work over the years. Now on the more frustrating side, I'm frustrated by question period, I don't mind saying. <laughs> I think a lot of us are. I think we do Canadians, uh, 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 we, we can do much better for Canadians. I'm t I think the tired lines in the bad theatre is wearing a little thin. I know I don't look forward to it and I know people on the other side feel the same way. Surely we can do better. I'm frustrated as, as all, my, all of us are when our private members' bills aren't, aren't uh, passed. Uh, one I did uh, that was the one uh, that I worked with the late federal tax lawyer Robert McMechan to do tax reform didn't go through, nor did the one I worked on to expunge cannabis uh, uh, convictions, which I think still uh, it was the right way to go, but the government has brought in a half measure. We'll see if that, if that works. I'm deeply disappointed by the, uh, the progress Canadians have made to reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, and I'm particularly disappointed in our collective failure to address the climate crisis. And I think we have to do better. Today's World Environment Day, it has to be that we give our future generations a better planet to live on. It's going to take hard work on all sides of this House for Canada to do its job. So by, con in, by way of conclusion, I am a proud social democrat. I have Tommy Douglas's picture on my wall. I think he was justly elected the the greatest Canadian for his work in giving us something we now take for granted, Medicare. And I'm hoping that the next Parliament will complete his work and bring in a comprehensive Thank public uh, Primacare program for all of Canada. So let me just...
Let us recommit, all of us, Mr. Speaker, to a fairer Canada. Let's reduce the enormous and growing inequality between the rich and poor in our society. What J.S. Woodsworth said is still true today. What we desire for ourselves, we wish for all. And Jack Layton still said it best. My friends, love is better than anger, so let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic. Thank you.